you are up and going. Yeah, gee, amazing what these computers can do. Okay, there we are. Um, so, uh, Video Call is the company, and uh, Clinic Stop is the brand name for our next generation telemedicine platform. Uh, and with this platform, we can deliver the world's first remote physical exam to patients outside the traditional setting. So let me just take a, a quick moment and tell you about me. Um, I'm a uh, one of eight children, although I don't look that young anymore. <laughs> but uh, my parents came over both from Armenia um, and had to learn English here. And uh, as one of eight children, uh, and mother not driving, anytime one of us got sick, dad had to close his tailoring shop and drive us to the next town where the family doctor was located. Happens to be, happened to be my great uncle. And I'm sure, you know, some of you can relate in whole or in part to that, but I knew way back then that there had to be a better way of accessing healthcare. And when I found the opportunity here, um, that is why we have worked over 10 years to develop uh, a rather sophisticated platform, but very easy to use by patients and by medical staff. Uh, my career started in the US Army, where I was responsible for tropospheric scatter communications for about 20 towns in South Vietnam. Uh, from there, I went to Bell Labs and supervised the development of several telecommunication systems and new telephones, and then on to AT&T, uh, where I, for 10 years, uh, did a variety of things. But one of the fun projects I had was to be the architect and the program director for the 43 kiosks, the touchscreen kiosks in Epcot for opening day. So park guests could use it without any training and uh, learn their way around the, the park pretty quickly. Uh, as a consultant, um, as uh, Jacqueline mentioned, um, one of my projects was up in Alaska, <clears throat> where I worked with uh, AT&T and GCI to put together a plan for broadband satellite access to the villages in Alaska. And uh, we even had backing from the uh, senator at the time, but it just did not work out. And we, that's another story uh, on the side. Um, okay. Okay, there we go. So what we have is an end-to-end -end integrated platform. It starts with a variety of patient units, including a mobile app, so you can find the nearest location, pre-register, do a variety of things. We can connect via satellite, or we can also connect via fiber or internet uh, for other circumstances, and in the end, connect to a remote medical call center. And the uh, nurse practitioners or the doctors can control everything in that cabin or the other patient units and read directly all of the vital signs of the patient, just as if they were face to face in the same room. So what re we're really doing is raising the bar for telehealth to the providers. Uh, we have a built-in seatback stethoscope so they can listen to your lungs from the back. We have an instrument cleaning system that cleans the instruments, the patient handle instruments after every use. And we have an auto sanitizing option. It's built into the cabin so that we can sanitize the unit between patient visits. That sanitizing option kills viruses like COVID-19. So we've attracted the attention of the president's task force on COVID-19. And I just got an inquiry today from the US Army for the same reason. 
So there's no physical attendant with the patient uh, unless there's some unique circumstances. And it's open architecture on both ends. So we can add new devices into the uh, diagnostic system with a patient uh, if it fits our model. And we can also interconnect from the uh, medical call center and uh, connect to electronic, electronic health record systems, um, health exchanges, and even send a report to your principal uh, primary uh, care physician. So the patient units actually come in a variety of configurations. Um, what we have uh, uh, ready probably in the next three to five months will be the what we call the smart medical chair right in the middle. And that does almost all the functions that are in the completed cabin on the left. But we can also put that unit in a tent, a medical tent um, with proper um, air pressure and filtering and auto, sanit and, uh, auto sanitizing. And so you could have COVID-19 uh, uh, patients either pre-screened or post-monitoring if needed. And then these units could be put into ships, vans, trailers. Uh, we're talking to people in the UK about putting them in um, abandoned railroad cars. Uh, I don't have to tell you about the size of the market, but what I'd like to do is have you look at the bottom of the chart, because that's our competition. Open kiosks where you might observe a few vital signs like in the Higgy unit, uh, where you might use your smartphone to call up a physician, like with Teladoc or American Well, MD Live, there are a variety of them, and more coming on the market. But those basically give the provider just a few vital signs, and it's mostly self-reported data. In our case, they're reading the uh, data directly from FDA approved instruments and have much higher confidence in the diagnosis of the patient. And you could go to a mini clinic if, they, uh, if they're in the neighborhood, and, uh, but those are more expensive and you probably get almost the equivalent service. We have a variety of partners to date. Um, uh, GW, uh, Medical Faculty Associates, is probably a name you might uh, be familiar with down here in DC. <clears throat> uh, well established, they're the ones who answer the 911 calls uh, for the White House. Uh, the other one that might interest you is Psych Associates of Maryland. <clears throat> That's a psychiatry practice. They got five locations and they want to provide the basic services that we would uh, promote, but they also want to provide behavioral counseling and telepsych services. Um, we've got interest from Well Tower and Sunrise who are in the senior living space. Albertsons, who's got well over 400 supermarkets nationwide, about 300 of them with pharmacies. So they want them so they can compete with CVS. A major trucking company that wants to put them into truck stops. Hughes would be one of our major satellite providers. Uh, and then we have other partners. We have a pretty extensive team at this stage. Um, uh, between all of these uh, uh, people on our team, including two doctors, uh, we've got probably over 400 years of experience and, uh, and also uh, experience with over 10 startups. Uh, plus, we have additional uh, advisors down at the bottom. So that is the quick overview. And uh, uh, what we're looking for are uh, partners in, in Alaska, uh, and those could be 
um, partners for locations. Uh, they could be uh, medical centers or medical practices that want to provide the medical services uh, to the various patient locations in Alaska. Uh, and also finance it. Uh, there's an interesting economic aspect to this. Um, there may be villages that are so small, there may only be a few patients per day, which is then difficult to justify the most expensive unit we have, which is the cabin. Uh, it could justify the smaller units, but in any event, if that uh, location patient unit were subsidized in some form or fashion, uh, the cost of service to the patient, that, that patient charge, could be reduced. So there are scenarios where we could reduce that copay to something insignificant. And that's what you need to uh, encourage people to go and get checked out early. Um, so at this point, I'll stop and see if you have any questions. That was wonderful, Charlie. Thank you. I, I can uh, imagine that there are lots of questions. So is there any, I certainly have plenty, but I'd like to open it up to our community and see if there's anybody who would like to ask Charlie a question now. I have a question and I see Kai put a question in the um, chat, but my question is, Charlie, do you actually have a unit? Have you been implemented or are you still like at the prototype um, phase? We're between prototype and production. We have a working prototype in Baltimore, which I demonstrate on a scheduled basis. Uh, and that's located where our design and manufacturing partner is for the basic electronics and devices of the platform. Uh, the uh, manufacturer for the cabin itself is Wenger Corp. Uh, and the basic shell of the cabin has been a manufacturer for 30 years is music practice rooms. So they're sturdy, they're quiet, and they're just modifying the panels to our specifications. Um, so since we built that prototype, we have re-architected the software. We've got about 80% of that uh, completely coded and tested, and we've made design improvements in the seatback stethoscope, in the instrument cleaning system and a few other uh, of the subsystems. And so once we get our funding and we have an investment banker right now uh, uh, out raising capital in this uh, wonderful market, um, we're probably only six months away from delivering our first cabin and uh, putting that into trial with Sunrise Senior Living in GW. Uh, but what's more exciting is I've got a uh, fundraising going on with our existing shareholders. And it looks like we'll meet our minimum. And in which case, uh, approximately three months from now, we'll have that smart medical chair ready. And uh, we'll be able to put that into both GW and uh, Psych of Maryland for a customer, patient, and medical evaluation. So I think by the time we could put a plan together for Alaska, uh, we'll be delivering uh, production units. There's quite a few other questions. Um, let's get started on some of those. Um, Kai is asking, can you access personal health data that might be in a smartphone, an iPhone, or a watch, or uh, personal health records that someone has? Uh, the answer is we will be able to. Uh, we have, uh, as I mentioned, a mobile app now, and some of the patient data can be preloaded so they can pre-register. Uh, that data is about the same data that you'd fill on a clipboard in the doctor's office. So all that can be preloaded, but it also can be uh, inputted uh, if they show up at the cabin and use the check-in terminal. Uh, we are talking to companies that patient, have patient engagement apps, and there are two ways we can access any data 
the patient has in records in those patient apps. Uh, we've also talked with Epic and Cerner and also third party vendors so that we can have the medical attendant pull up the record for John Doe. And we would need authentication besides permission, but uh, with the interoperability uh, standards improving, uh, they're not perfect yet to get them all playing off the same sheet, but they're getting closer. Uh, we believe that we could pull records up ahead of time uh, for that medical person. Awesome. Um, Charlie, um, the next questions I'm going to ask kind of two in a row. One is what about your analysis and blood testing and then patient privacy? Uh, let's take those a piece at a time. Uh, privacy, uh, there are many aspects to that, but uh, certainly there's privacy in using your, your mobile app. Uh, we have privacy screens and the like on the patient terminal, so someone can't look over the patient's shoulder. Uh, the uh, operation over the satellite is actually a point-to-point -point private circuit. So it doesn't touch the internet at all. And so there's complete privacy and security on that link. Uh, the next weakest point is when we pour, uh, um, uh, finish the patient visit. And we, by then, would have created a patient record of that visit, uh, which they don't do it at a mini clinic, by the way. But we'll then turn that data over to the EHR or the Health In Information Exchange. That's the weakest point, but uh, I've been assured by Epic and Cerner that we can make that a secure link. Um, and so there would be privacy on that score. We do not retain the patient record in our system. So if someone tried to hack us, they wouldn't find any patient data. Okay. Great. Shirley, um, Maria, uh, Mariah has asked, is there something um, in the health plans that, um, like, could you work with Aetna or some of the health plans out there to provide this service? Uh, let me make sure. Um, Mariah, if I haven't gotten your question correct, can you unmute and maybe ask it? Sure. No, I was just thinking um, for health plans, it, and the one that comes to mind is Aetna because it's owned by CVS, so they have a ton of outlets everywhere. Um, is this the kind of thing maybe a health plan like that would be interested in that they could put into their retail locations, maybe in more um, rural or less populous places to facilitate um, just uh, telemedicine for the patients? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, so let me elaborate on that. Uh, you may have noticed, although um, it was you know, small print on, on the screen, our chief medical advisor for six years was the chief medical officer for CVS and specifically managing the minute clinics that Excellent. you're referring to. Um, she basically has said, when we get a tr trial completed in the field, CVS will want to talk to us, but not until then. And we're less than a year away from doing that. That's so, a huge contact. That's great. Yeah. And uh, also, <clears throat> the other half of that is uh, between the changes in regulations, the president's decree, um, uh, state laws, uh, they're starting to push for reimbursement for equivalent services. So the service we're proposing to provide is equivalent to your going into the doctor's office, seeing the nurse practitioner, and walking out with a prescription. And so uh, whatever that reimbursement is, uh, the insurance companies, Medicare, are going to have to follow suit. And uh, so uh, this will be a reimbursable service. There's no other good way of getting telehealth out there unless you can find what that reimbursable service is. In addition, we're talking to uh, people that are connected in the insurance industry uh, for companies that are putting man clinics 
in their company headquarters buildings, uh, that doesn't make any sense in their small and medium lo locations. So in those work locations, they're looking for a telehealth solution. And we think we've got the best one out there. Okay, Charlie, we are so rapidly um, coming up to time, but can, um, so Adam would like to know um, how, how you get patients comfortable with going into the booth and using the service. And then Kai is wondering about your funding. Okay, uh, we will have at each new um, cabin location, a customer service rep for two to three weeks where we'll do free demonstrations. Uh, we'll also have units in a uh, trailer or a truck that we can drive out to communities and, and do promotions and education. Um, so we don't see that as a problem. And we did a customer uh, research project uh, back in the beginning as to people's feelings about going into a, uh, uh, into a cabin for self-diagnosis. Acceptance rate was over 60%. Um, as far as funding is concerned, uh, we expect within the next two weeks uh, to wrap up the funding to get started on the smart chair development. And the investment banker who's raising the three and a half million dollars says it's going to be roughly three uh, to five months uh, for him to raise that. We think that may change because of the uh, big push in telemedicine these days because of the COVID uh, virus. Awesome. Charlie, there are still some questions in the chat that we did not get to. I am going to ask um, anybody who would like some follow-up. I put um, Charlie's email into the chat, so please uh, make note of that. All of you, thank you very much for participating. Charlie, do you have any last words that you'd like to leave us with? Uh, no, I, I'm very excited about this. I'd be delighted to you know, be a part of the solution in Alaska and uh, looking forward to working with any entities, um, you know, as I said, either medical providers, uh, location hosts, um, uh, operators that we can partner with to make this happen. Awesome. Well, thank you. And again, we're getting all kinds of good tips and information in the chat, and we'll try to make sure that you get that information. I'd like to say thank you to everybody who participated today. We'll have the link up on our YouTube channel within the next uh, 48 to 72 hours. And um, I just encourage you all to maybe tell your friends and coworkers and everybody about Charlie and his technology, and, and I'm excited about what it might be able to do in Alaska. So thank you all, and um, look forward to seeing you in two weeks when we have a, a new entrepreneur who will present. So thank you, and take care. Yep. Take care. Thanks.